Hi, welcome to my first lecture on the Cairo Khan defense. The Cairo Khan defense starts by e4 and c6. The normal continuation in like 80% of all Cairo Khan games is d4 and d5, even though there are other moves. This is sort of known as the general initial setup for the Cairo Khan defense. And just some basics of the Cairo Khan defense. It's actually named after H. Caro of Berlin and Kahn, M. Kahn of uh, Vienna, who analyzed the opening in the 1890s. And then it was uh, popularized by uh, people like Capa Blanca. So what is, what is the idea behind the Caro Kahn? Well, it's um, Black's idea is to give up um, the center pawn, his D pawn, uh, for easy development. And also that the bishop on c8 is not trapped. And basically, my last lecture, I covered the French defense. And if we contrast this with the French defense, black tries to hold on to that d-pawn, uh, but gives up mobility, and the bishop on c8 is trapped. So basically what the Karakon defense is, it's sort of like trying to have a, a good things of the French um, and get away and give up and um, but not have problems with the French, especially the bishop on c8. And the Karakon works, um, my last note is it, it works pretty good against overly aggressive players for white or good in-game players for black. So it's just sort of something to keep in mind. So from this position, remember we said that basically, um, Black's going to give up this D pawn here for mobility, but the but his bishop on C8 is not going to be trapped, unlike in the French. So the normal continuations for for, for um, White from this position are uh, three. The most common one is um, Knight to C3, and if you don't know, White can also play Knight to D2 with the same result as Knight to C3. Or white can um, take the pawn, which is known as the exchange variation, and or he can white can advance the pawn, which is called the advance variation. And with my remaining time in this lecture, I want to cover the advance variation and the exchange variation. So let's look at the advance variation because it's probably the most like the French defense. So. If you watch my French defense lectures, you'd um, probably be able to see a lot of the same ideas. And for black, the first thing black's going to want to do is get this bishop out. Because black's going to plan to play um, e6. So that's what black is going to do is play bishop f5. And white's going to play knight to f3 supporting, developing, and then, you know, helping to defend this d4 pawn, which is going to become subject to attack, just like in the French. Now, black's going to play e6, supporting uh, d5, and now um, the bishop is outside of the pawn chain, or it's not trapped in anymore. Um, Why is going to play bishop to e2, basically um, preparing the castle, and there's nowhere else for the white bishop or, to go. Because of d3, black will simply capture it, and this is not a good piece for for black, so he'd be happy to exchange off of sort of a poor piece for one of white's good pieces. So black will play knight to d7, sort of uh, preparing black wants to push this pawn up, and then the knight will be supporting it. White will um, castle. Black will play knight to, e, knight to e7. Basically, black plans to move the knight to here after the pawn moves up. Now white will attack the bishop here. We'll move it back to uh, g6. And now white will play a knight to d2, somewhat like the French Tarish. Um, White now plans to play the knight to here, will help support this 
the pawn on d4 it also allows white to play c3 defending d4 now black plays the c5 move attacking the base of the pawn chain sort of attacking this piece this is hopefully this looks very familiar for the French white plays c3 like I said before now black will play knight c6 once again t attacking but I'll just like the French uh, just sort of point out the queen could always come there and help attack in a later move now white will play basically take the knight and the h pawn will take the knight and then the knight will move to f3 so that's the um, advanced the variation or one of the lines in the advanced variation so let me back up to where we can look at the exchange variation so instead of advancing the pawn like we just looked at we're now going to take the pawn of course um, black will simply recapture the pawn and now from here black has two options he can the, the two main options are moving the knight, uh, not knight, uh, pawn the c4, which is called the pawn of Boltevik attack. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that right. And the other one is just to play the normal exchange variation, which is bishop to d3. So let's just look at the um, bishop to d3 um, variation first, since it's just this is actually just called the exchange variation like the main line and now knight um, black will play knight to um, c6 hitting the pawn right here attacking the pawn what's going to play c3 supporting d4 and also stopping any business from the knight to come in here and attacking black will just develop another piece the belt the knights sort of goes along with the theme of knights before bishops now the bishop will come to f4 I mean you gotta think of where is this bishop going to be developed it's going to be developed to here or to here and f4 seems like a much more useful square black will develop to bishop to g4 hitting the queen the queen will come to b3 where it actually attacks is undefended pawn now the queen will go to d7 uh, in some lines uh, black likes to play at the c8 but i prefer d7 because it will allow for future castling and also maybe if black castles king side the rook can come to the c file knight to uh, white plays knight to d2 which is going to support the next move so now black plays e6 uh, basically um, now this white bishop is entrapped in so if you think about it black wants to get rid of this white bishop is not too useful so black will seek to exchange it off and a white will play knight on g to f3 and black will exchange it off and then black will now play bishop to d6 so that's the um, sort of normal line in the exchange variation. Let's back up to the pawn of both of the attack. So instead of so instead of playing, so white just captured just to reiterate our position again. And now white plays c4. Okay knight to f6 so basically if white now takes black will retake and then this this pawn will become isolated meaning white won't be able to attack the d5 square if the knight comes here and the knight can sit there for a long time so now white will develop its knight and then white, black will play e6. I've never sort of been a fan of this move. I can't really come up with a better move because the bishop now becomes trapped for a while. And then knight to f3. 
bishop to e7. The bishop could come to d4, but remember now this bishop is trapped, and if this bishop comes to here, black really doesn't want to exchange it off, and a lot of times if you move it to b4, it's just going to come back to e7 anyway, so I say, why do that? And then the pawn, well, white will take the pawn, and black will recapture with the knight. White's bishop comes to d3. I'm really running low on time, so unfortunately I'm going to have to stop the analysis there. Okay, but that, uh, download the file and go through the moves.